On today's episode, what do women want? We finally have an answer. Ayo, it's the 9 to 5 Misfits back again to help you change that game and kick ass in your career, baby. So what do women want? At least in the workplace, all we want is equality. We're not saying that we're going to take away men's rights. This is not a zero-sum game. We just want a level playing field. Sadly, we still see that old boys club mentality. Even Silicon Valley, which is supposed to be super gender equal, is not. Okay, is not. We did a lot of research on this topic and we came across a survey called Elephant in the Valley by a couple of women who gathered solid data to address all the issues women face in the workplace. We'll look at a few areas from that survey and we'll see how we can totes fix that. Number one, parameters of success. When you think of success, you think money, status, professional accomplishments. And we think of people who are strong, confident, aggressive, and willing to do anything and hustle. That. But what about emotional intelligence, empathy, the ability to be nurturing, people who can't hustle all day because they're caregivers? Why aren't their contributions considered successful? So Anne-Marie Slaughter talked about this in her brilliant TED talk that you guys have to check out. She said real equality doesn't mean valuing women on men's terms. What an app name, Slaughter. So I think it's about time that we had a much wider definition of success. Slay. Number two, inclusion. Women on predominantly male teams are often left out of after work networking events like golfing because they're not even invited. Even in tech, there is this well-documented frat boy culture that makes it so intimidating for women to even participate. And this is bad because informal outings are where relationships Relationships are made. So who do you think is up for that next promotion, people? The guy who went to the strip club with his boss or the woman who's just as good at work but doesn't have a great personal connection? How do we solve this? I got one. Hire more women, people. Yeah. We're not suggesting special treatment or affirmative action. We're just saying seek out qualified women. Have a diverse set of team building activities that women can participate in. Like that thunder down under, okay. baby. Number three, promotions. When I was in oil and gas, I saw men getting promoted at a much faster rate than women all the time but I was like eh, it's oil and gas and I got out of it but now even in digital marketing all the influencers seem to be men of course I'm not saying they don't deserve to be there they've done great work but the only way I found out about them was by seeing them on the same blogs podcasts YouTube channels lists and it was just all these men promoting each other you sure it wasn't just a Facebook algorithm <laughs> possibly and that's the thing it's not that there's no women out there killing it but they're just not getting the same platform so one way we can change this is we can have a direct impact as the 90 I've missed it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying that we're never gonna promote other men, but I do want to make a concerted effort to find the women out there and elevate them. Number four, unconscious bias. There's a lot of stuff men do at the workplace without even realizing why it's bad. I mean, some examples are men just looking at other men at the table when there are women at the same table. Asking women to take meeting notes or order lunch or women having their idea ignored when a man just rephrases the same thing. As isolated events, guys, this does seem harmless. But if it's happening over and over again, most of us women feel like we're not taken seriously. Simple fix. Just become more aware of your actions and see how that can have an impact. Number five, motherhood. In most industries, having babies is somehow an inconvenience or a liability. Somehow being a caregiver just doesn't mesh with people's idea of success. It's probably why maternity leave is pretty much non-existent in most companies. And don't even get me started on paternity leave. What that is? <laughs> Nobody knows. There also seems to be little to no support for new moms. People actually seem resentful of them when they come back to work here. How dare you birth a child and care for it? Good news, some companies like Google, Netflix, Microsoft are catching on, but there's still so much work to be done. Number six, casual sexism. Sexual harassment is a big deal. R.B. Weinstein, hello. But casual sexism is also a huge issue in the workplace. It seems harmless, but it makes women feel undermined. We were recently at a marketing event and we wanted to go talk shop to the speaker after. We go up to him and the first thing he says is, uh, do you think I'd forget these pretty faces? And after starting off the conversation like that, I was pretty sure he wasn't going to take me seriously anyway. Yeah. Especially in a professional event. And it sounds harmless, but what was I supposed to do then? I couldn't really say anything. So what can you do in the situation? You can't just make a scene, so we just tend to let it go. It needs to stop. So guys, please understand that the seemingly harmless stuff does have an impact. You know who you are. So for all you nerds out there, if you're interested in the day data of what we were talking about, go to elephantinthevalley.com. Of course, most of us are not in a position to make sweeping changes, but we can at least start by becoming aware. And hey, hit that subscribe button right now. It's next free! To it. Stay tuned for our Getting Real segment on Thursday and we will see you with a brand new 5-Minute Hack next Tuesday. Bye!